Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little subscribe button at the bottom of your screen? Go ahead, click that subscribe button. Really does help our channel grow, our audience grow, and I really do appreciate it more than you know. So click that subscribe button. Appreciate your support. Now, here's the video that you came here for. This is from Josh Woodwa. Uh, I, I think that's an abbreviation. Uh, he is an Arkansas fan, or he lo- or he, you know, works on a farm because he's got a pig in his uh, in his uh, bio. But Josh is a great listener of the show. I think I, I think it's Josh, but great listener of the show comes prepared every day and asked a great question. He says, "Does the VAL UNC commitment make Hawkins more likely to be a hog, or is he NBA in the NBA draft?" All right, so for people who missed this, so a couple things. We talked on Wednesday night show into Thursday about Coleman Hawkins, 6'8", 6'9", forward from Illinois in the NBA draft, and I referenced that I believe the two schools that are most likely to land him if he returns to college basketball would be North Carolina or Arkansas. And so the question from Josh is very, it's a very good question, and that is because the question is, uh, does the VAL UNC commit make Hawkins more likely to be a hog if he's in the NBA draft? VAL is Ven Allen Lubin. Okay. If you have not heard the name forward from Vanderbilt, uh, this past season averaged about 12, 12 and a half points per game, uh, six boards, really good kind of backup ish big. Um, I don't think he's like a, a total game changer in terms of, uh, in terms of like North Carolina ceiling or whatever, but this speaks to what we have talked about on this show pretty much nonstop, is that uh, North Carolina needs more big bodies. They feel like they are a big body or two away, an elite big body really, from being a real contender. I believe I have them somewhere around number 10 in my way too early top 25. Guard play is really good. Uh, RJ Davis is back. Elliot Cadeau is back. Cade Tyson comes in, but they have needed a big guy. They have missed on Cliff Omiyori, obviously headed to Alabama, Jonas Adu headed to Arkansas. And so they've missed on a bunch of big names and they take Van Allen Lubin on Thursday. And the question from Josh is pretty straightforward. Does this mean that Coleman Hawkins, if he were returned to college basketball is now completely out of the picture at North Carolina. What I would say to that, Josh, is pretty straightforward. No, I do not believe that that means that North Carolina will stop recruiting Coleman Hawkins, but I do think it raises the more interesting question. By the way, I don't think it's going to stop them from recruiting Agana Anienso either from Kentucky, but I do think it raises the equally interesting question of does it make it less likely that one of those players would want to go to North Carolina with another big guy in tow. So first of all, Van Allen Lubin, like I said, I don't see him as a starting five man, which is kind of what they're looking for. He's six foot eight. He's kind of a banger. Um, you know, listen, he was productive this season at, at Vanderbilt, but this isn't like a game changing guy, six foot eight, a little bit undersized, you know, doesn't really shoot the three ball. Um, and so I, again, I deem him to be kind of a backup big. Now, in terms of Coleman Hawkins, like I said, I don't believe this means North Carolina stops recruiting him. Coleman Hawkins, of course, 12 and a half points per game, six rebounds, 37% shooting from three. But I do think the question becomes, does it change kind of the, the hierarchy of his decisions? If it's not the NBA draft, is it Arkansas? Is North Carolina still in the mix? Whatever. So let me start by saying, and I've been consistent on this, and we're going to talk Jackson Robinson in a minute, and nothing's going to change there. Um... I, I I believe that Coleman Hawkins wants to be in the NBA in the NBA draft, and I think he wants to stay. And in a lot of ways, let me say this really quick. I actually feel bad for him and some of these kids that have really tough draft decisions because in the next couple days, he's got to make a decision, even though the draft isn't until like the last couple days of June. And so what's interesting is I was talking to producer Matt about this before the show. Usually the deadline is right around Memorial Day. But then the draft is usually June 13th or June 15th or June 17th or whatever. And there's kind of a quick turnaround this year. There's almost a month in between. And you think about all those players that how many workouts they could get in, how many teams they could meet with and how 
if you're a Coleman Hawkins, you only have to impress one team to get drafted. But now you got a month shaved off your timeline and you got to figure things out in a hurry. I believe he still wants to stay in the draft. And I'll just be blunt to directly answer Josh's question. I do believe that he will stay in the draft. I think at some point he's going to realize that, listen, going back to college, the money's good. Let me, let me backtrack. I would say, you know, what's the old Tom Brady deflate gate? I think it's more likely than not that he stays in the draft. I don't think it's 100% that he's staying in the draft. I don't think it's 100% that he's coming back. But I just look at his situation and say, does he want to come back to college? Does he want to start over? Does he want to do something new? Because as we've talked about quite a bit on this show, he's not going back to Illinois. He said it publicly in multiple interviews. He said they have recruited another roster assuming that I would not be there. And so it's not fair to the guys on that campus and on that roster if I were to come back and take minutes and playing time and opportunities that were promised to other people. So I believe he wants to stay in the draft. I believe if he had to make a decision now, he'd probably stay. But he's also, if he comes back, is going to have a lot of great options. Now to Josh's question, I do think because of the commitment of Van Allen Lubin on whatever day it was, Thursday from North Carolina, I think it probably knocks them down a peg. Arkansas, it appears, is a team that is going to go after this kid full speed ahead if, in fact, he returns to college basketball. Now, I made the argument on Wednesday's show. I'm not totally sure that that is a guy that I would prioritize if I was Arkansas. I like Jonas Adu and Big Z at the five. I like playing a do as a small ball four, and I would actually rather have a guy like Van Allen Lubin, who is a clear backup, then bringing in another star like Coleman Hawkins to play the five. Then you got to do it the three. Then there's kind of a log jam there with Carter Knox and Billy Richmond. What do they do? And then in the backcourt, if you get DJ Wagner, then all of a sudden there's a log jam there as well because you have another star, another mouth to feed. But if Coleman Hawkins were to come back, I do think Arkansas would be in good shape because they got great NIL money. Calipari believes that he's a priority. And everybody I talk to believes that Arkansas really is pursuing this kid and really does want him. Now, from the North Carolina perspective, as I said, I don't think that the commitment from VAL Van Allen Lubin uh, is a deterrent necessarily from North Carolina recruiting him. I don't see Van Allen Lubin as a starting five. I see him as more of a backup. And I think they are still going to be full speed ahead with Agana and Yenso and Coleman Hawkins. Now, you could argue, by the way, with Coleman Hawkins. Is there a fit there as well? Coleman Hawkins is more of a natural four. Now, he can play the five, but I think he's more of a four, maybe a small ball five in spots. But is he a guy that you want playing the five nonstop? I mean, even since Hubert Davis has taken over, they've had Armando Baycott kind of that paint presence, and then they've had the Brady Manic types, the Harrison Ingram types that kind of play more on the perimeter. So I think in a perfect world, You'd love to have that big man already established. You would have loved to get Cliff Omayori, and I still think he could have brought in Coleman Hawkins. But yes, I believe Arkansas would be a priority. Um, and I'd be curious what the other schools would be outside of Carolina and, 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 and Arkansas. Kansas State, there was buzz there early. They took the kid from Sanford, a chore, a chore. Does that change the dynamics with them? Does somebody else emerge? You know, Louisville took two big guys. They took... Uh, they took Kayshawn Pryor from, from South Florida. They took uh, Frank Anselm from Georgia. So are, are, is Louisville out of the picture? Would they still be in the picture? I would think they would be out of the picture because Pryor is kind of the same player. So absolutely fascinating stuff. But yes, to answer your question, Josh, I do think it probably changes the calculus a little bit if Coleman Hawkins comes back to college basketball.